In the last class, we completed the first canto. Today, we will have discussion on canto 2. As you know that it's a heroic comical poem. So, this poem is full of laughter and ridicule. So, let's start. The opening lines of this canto are like the closing passage of canto 1, a tribute to Belinda's beauty and charm. As you can remember that we finished the last canto, we got high praise of Belinda. And this praise continues to the second canto. This canto opens with the praise of her beauty, her emergence from her house is compared to the rising of the sun. The poet then describes her journey over the river Thames in the company of the beautiful ladies and well-dressed young gentlemen. And the very early lines of the second canto is full of hyperbole. When the poet says that Not with more glories in the ethereal pain, the sun first rises over the purpled main. And when uh, again Pope says, Fair names and well-dressed youths around her shone, but every eye was fixed on her alone. On her white breast a sparkling cross she wore, which Jewish Jews might kiss and infidels adore. So here we find a critical tone of Pope and then he again he goes on praising her and revealing her character. Favors to none, to all she smiles extends, oft she rejects but never once offends. Bright as the sun her eyes the gazers strike and like the sun they shine on all alike. In these lines, Pope wants to express his thinking about Belinda by saying that her journey over the river Thames, her eyes of every, everyone were fixed on her, the eyes of everyone were fixed on her because of her superior charms. And obviously, this is an example of hyperbole. The radiance of her, of her eyes is compared to the radiance of the sun. She gave her smiles to everybody but showed no special fav favor to anybody. Might uh, yet graceful ease and sweetness void of pride might hide her faults in bells if bells had faults to hide. If to her share some female errors fall. Here again, if beautiful girls have any faults to hide, her grace, her composure, and her sweetness, which was untouched by any pride, would have hidden the faults of Belinda. Look on her face and you'll forgo forget them all. This nymph to the destruction of mankind nourished two locks which graceful hung behind in equal curls and well conspired to deck with shining ringlets the smooth ivory neck so here pope again goes saying that the be beautiful belinda possessed two locks of hair which hung gracefully in equal curls and which wrecked the peace of mind of men who beheld them it seemed that these locks which their, with their bright ringlets had en entered into an agreement with each other to decorate her smooth ivory white neck. Ivory white means it is an off-white color that resembles ivory, the material from which the teeth and tusks of animals like elephant walrus is made. So her beautiful 
ringlets of hair was curled and went down on her ivory white neck and whoever beheld the, this the person or the man simply got entangled with the beauty of her those locks men who looked at her would have been captured by and kept as prisoners with the beauty of her lock love in these labyrinths his slaves detains and mighty hearts are held in slender chains with hairy springs we the birds betray slight lines of hair surprise the finny prey fair tresses man's imperial race ensnare and beauty draws us with a single hair here we got a description of catching bird or fishing just we catch birds with traps in which we use horse hair similarly we catch fish with finishing lines in which we use horse hairs of which the fish are not in the least suspicious just like that men who belong to the sovereign class of earthly beings are caught into the trap of women's fair curls a beautiful woman can attract a man with a single hair the adventurous baron the bright locks admired he saw he wished and to the prize aspired resolved to win he meditates the way by force to ravish or by fraud betray for when success a lover's toil attends few ask if fraud or force attained his ends so here we can see the willy art of desirous the baron or lord peter to have one of the beautiful two locks of belinda that means miss arabella farmore the adventurous baron admired the bright locks of belinda he looked at those locks he longed for them he craved for them and he wanted to have those lock of hair he was filled with an ambition to possess that treasure and he got determined to carry out his purpose he tried to think how he could manage or how he could attain the lock of hair he was prepared to use force or to rob of belinda and he was ready to use fraud in order to rob her that means baron was determined to have the lock of hair by hook or by crook and here pope gives another expression that when the efforts of a lover have been rewarded with success few people ask whether he won his object by means or by fraud or by force that doesn't matter so at the ending of the second canto we find this uh, the uh, the willy art of baron uh, he, uh, his aspiration to have the beautiful lock of hair and watching this ariel he was very serious and he said to other spirits and he ordered them to come down from the sails some of them surrounded the beautiful belinda in circles some threatened their way through the labyrinthine ringlets of her hair they tried their utmost to protect belinda's hair they began to wait with beating hearts for the misfortune which was imminent the sylphs who were assigned to safeguard belinda they were they waited anxious and trembling for fate to reveal its purpose
and they were they were waiting for the impending danger so that's all for today get your preparation learn the lessons by heart keep yourself competent and you must line in between the lines of the poetry as you know that this is a mock heroic and after finishing the poem i'll give you so many questions before that you need to learn very carefully and minutely and hope you are enjoying the poem and before leaving i am i'd like to remind you to wash your hands regularly keep washing your hands have nutritious food follow the health rules and take care thank you